All right, so I want to talk a little bit about the Fiducian Mythesis Partitioning Heuristic. This is from a classic paper from the Design Automation Conference back in 1982, and it's a very, very good partitioning heuristic um, and has some really just wonderful data structure ideas, um, some great ideas here. And some key points out of it, it's going to be iterative, and again, it's a heuristic, so there's no guarantee of optimality. And in a lot of ways, it's similar to Kernig and Lin, but the difference is we're going to be moving only a single vertex at a time, rather than the pair that you saw in Kernig and Lin. We're going to operate multiple passes. So what we'll do is we'll unlock all the vertices, move one vertex at a time, trying to improve the cut as much as we can, and then we'll roll best back to the best configuration scene, and that's going to happen in every pass. There's some absolute data structure wizardry that makes this extremely fast, much, much faster than Kernig and Lin. Kernig and Lin was big O of n cubed. If you're not careful with your data structures, fiducia mythesis should be big O of n linear time for each pass. So some key ideas. First off, there's the gain of a vertex. We're going to be moving one vertex at a time, and we're interested in how it's going to change the cut. So this vertex over here has plus two, because if we move it from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, we're going to reduce the cut by two. So one, two nets connected to it. So moving this guy over will change the cut by two. Next vertex on the over has a gain of plus one. So if we were to move this vertex from this side, right-hand side to the left, we'd reduce the cut by one. This vertex here has a gain of zero. If we move it from the right-hand side over to the left, this edge would no longer be cut, but this one would become cut. So it's got a net gain of zero. This last vertex has a gain of negative one. If we move it to the, from the right-hand side over to the left, this edge becomes cut. And so this is the idea of a gain of vertex, and we're gonna to have to keep this thing, these things up to date as we go along. So let me talk about this data structure for just a second. This is really, really just uh, pure genius. Um, very, very good idea. If you've taken the data structures class and you've wondered about doubly linked lists and who the heck uses them, well, they're, they're, in, they're in use here. This is what it's good for. We're going to be keeping track of the vertices and how much of a gain each one has, and we're going to need to update that frequently as the algorithm goes along. So this is a doubly linked list, and it might have a vertex sitting in a particular gain bucket, and because it's a doubly linked list, we can insert and delete in constant time. So if the gain of this, this vertex changes, we can delete him from this bucket move them to a different bucket very quickly. I'll be walking through an example in a minute to show you exactly how that works. All right, so let's walk through a simple example of fiducia mythesis. I've got a fairly small graph. Hopefully it'll be easy to follow along what's going on. I've got four vertices, 0, 1, 2, and 3, three edges. And what I've got over here on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the gain buckets of fiducia mythesis. I've got a maximum possible gain of plus or minus two, and that's because here, for instance, this vertex has got two edges on it. The most you can change a cut is by two, by shifting this guy left or right. So that's why it's either plus two or minus two. Things can get only better or worse by the maximum cardinality of any vertex in the graph. Your vertex here is only one edge, only a change of one possible off this guy. So the maximum gain Best case, worst case is going to be two. And we're going to start off the fiducia mythesis pass by putting all the vertices into either the left-hand bucket or the right-hand bucket. So vertex two will change the cut by two if we move it to the other side. So it's in the bucket for plus two. This is going to be a doubly linked list, so we can do insert and delete in constant time. So vertex two is sitting in the plus two list. Vertex zero will change both by one going left-hand side, right-hand side, so it is in the plus one bucket. We've got a separate batch of buckets over on the other-hand side. Vertex one is in plus two, because if I move it to the other side, I can reduce the cut by two. Vertex three is in plus one, because it will improve the cut by one if I move it to the other side. So we're going to start out here with our, with our buckets and our data structures, and what's going to happen is we're going to pick the vertex that gets us the mass, ma maximum gain, move it to the other side iteratively. Start off and you can look from either left hand or right hand because they're roughly equally balanced. 
And let's say we start off with vertex 2. We're going to take vertex 2, move it to the other side. And we'll take vertex 2 out of the, bu out of the bucket. It's going to be locked. We're not going to move it again. And the cut has gone down to 1. Now there's going to be a couple things that have to happen here. There are some other vertices that are on, connected to 2. So vertex 2 is connected to vertex 1 and to vertex 3. So we're going to have to update the gain for vertex 1. Vertex 1 used to have a gain of plus 2. But now that 2 is on the other side, it's actually going to go into the 0 bucket. Pretty cool with that. Have one edge here, one edge here. If I move one to the other side, it's going to get no change to the gain. So we can, in constant time, delete it from the plus 2 bucket, move it down to the 0 bucket. This is sort of a key idea for, from Fiducian Mathesis, uh, part of their data structure wizardry. All right. The other edge that got changed, so when, I move, when we move 2 over, is this one here that connects to 3. Vertex 3 used to be in the plus 1 bucket, but now that 2 has moved over, it'll actually make things worse by 1 if we move it. So he gets deleted from the plus 1, reinserted in the minus 1 bucket. All right, we've done the move of vertex 2. We updated the vertices that are connected to vertex 2. Now we have to go through and say, OK, we need to pick another one to move. Left-hand side has only got one vertex on it, so we're going to try to keep things balanced. We'll go to the right-hand side. Bucket plus 2 is empty. Bucket plus 1 is empty. Bucket of 0, hey, we got vert or vertex 1. All right, so we'll grab vertex 1, we'll move them to the other side. We'll take them out of the data structure, out of the bucket data structure. Cut is now 1, still one edge cut. And now that 1 has moved over, we have to update the vertices that are connected to it. This connection to 2, we can skip 2 because he's already fixed. We don't need to worry about fixing the gain for vertex 2. But vertex 0, he's over here. He used to be or was in the plus 1 bucket. But now that vertex 1 has moved over, it's actually going to hurt us by 1 if we move zero, vertex 0. So we delete him from the plus 1 bucket, move him to the minus 1 bucket. And again, these are doubly linked lists, so we can do insert and delete in constant time. You don't want to have a singly linked list or, or anything like that. It's a doubly linked list. It will make your life much easier. All right, so we've got that move happening. Now we're going to pick another vertex to move over. Left and right buckets sides are roughly equal, um, so we can choose from either side. Vertex plus 2, nothing there. Plus 1, nothing there. 0 plus there, nothing there. Minus 1, this is going to make things worse by 1. And again, this is the hill climbing idea that you saw in Kernigan and Lynn. We can frequently go over a hill and find a better solution if we just keep on going. So we're going to grab vertex 0, move them to the other side, take vertex 0 out of here, Cut has gone up to 2. It's gotten a little bit worse. And what we normally do is, OK, vertex 0 got moved. We'll need to update the things that are connected to vertex 0. Vertex 1 is already fixed. Nothing else to update. Then, only down to 1 on the left-hand side, go back and say, OK, let's grab what we can get. Nothing over here, nothing over here. Best one we can find, vertex 3. So we're going to move them over. That changes the cut back up to 3. It's sort of the mirror image of where we started. And vertex 3, we'd normally move him and try to update here, and nothing to change, and so we're finished. This is sort of the end of the fiducial Mathesis pass. So now we're going to roll back, try to find the best solution we can find so far. So we were, in this configuration, we're going to undo the move of vertex 3. undo the move of vertex 0. And here's the best solution we've sound, seen. Cut of 1 in this configuration. We also have a tie, so we could also choose this one. Moving vertex 2, that's also a cut of 1. Either one of these have a cut of 1, 
happen to like this one better because it's a little bit more balanced. And that is a single pass of fiducium thesis. What you normally do is run a pass, get to this configuration, and then you'd start the whole thing again from this arrangement where you'd fill up the gain buckets again. And let's do that real quick. Now we've got a gain bucket. Vertex zero is in the minus one. Makes things worse when we move it over. Vertex one would be in the zero bucket. Vertex two would be in the zero bucket. Vertex three would be in minus bucket. And then we'd start this whole process all again from scratch. All right, we want to talk a little bit about the C code that you might use to on the back end of this sort of thing. I've got a gain bucket structure. We're going to keep track of the vertexes, vertices, and so I've got a vertex ID. And also next to previous, forward, back, whatever your favorite flavor is, pointers to implement the doubly linked list. And so we're going to have a, a bucket for each possible gain and doubly linked lists to insert and delete. And then on the left-hand side, we're actually going to have an array of these gain bucket structures. The maximum gain is a maximum cardinality of any vertex because we're going to have maximum gain plus or minus whatever the cardinality is, multiply by that by two, and also we have a bucket there for zero. So the range is going to be plus or minus p max, and we've got this extra one for zero. We have a separate gain bucket structures for the left-hand side and the right-hand side. When I implement this, I usually use something like negative one to indicate a placeholder ent entry in the gain bucket, and it's easy to check to see if a bucket's entry empty if you've done that. All right, so some pseudocode for a fiducial mathesis pass. Normally, you initialize the buckets, so you go through the entire graph, you calculate the gain of each vertex, and then you put the vertex into the appropriate gain bucket. And then we've got this while loop where we're going to gra grab a vertex that has maximum gain, and because we're doing hill climbing, it might actually be making things worse, but we'll get whatever the best one is. And we're also going to, this code is going to check to make sure that we're keeping the sides balanced. So we don't always grab them left, don't always grab them right. If they're balanced, we'll pick whichever one has maximum gain. If there's unbalanced and we're running low on one side, we will always pick from the other. Grab the vertex, remove it from the bucket, and then we'll flip the side that the vertex is assigned to. And then we have to do some buck. Uh, bookkeeping to update all the other vertices that might be connected to this vertex B that we've just moved. So we'll check the nets that are connected to V, recalculate the gains from the nets, go back through, check all the vertices that are on each of these nets, and there's some update work. It's not terrible, but it's got to be done, and if you've implemented your graph efficiently, efficiently with linked lists, it should be fairly quick. Once you've moved all the vertices, then you can roll back and get back to the best observed intermediate solution. And you return that value to whoever you called you. Because here's the, here's the shell for the FM. We start off with a randomized partition. So we're going to take all the vertices and just roll the dice, throw them on the left-hand side, right-hand side at random. And it's going to be a terrible starting place. But the goal is to get something better. So we will run an FM pass get a better cut, find some sort of improvement. If we've gotten any gain from where we started, we go back and we do it again. So we run a first pass. If we got better, yeah, we got better. We'll go back around, run another pass using the first pass as a starting point, keep on going around until we can't make any improvements, and that's what the heuristic will return. So again, this is a fiducial thesis partitioning heuristic really a great paper from 1982 some clever data structures and i encourage you to uh, take a look at it great stuff great stuff